Let's start with the Boston Bruins because they might have a Jeremy Swayman problem. And I cautioned earlier this week on a podcast that we're doing the it's going to happen. He's going to sign. Yeah. There, It's going to work out. St- oh, if you're worried about it, then you're this or you're that. I think it's going to work out. But you just don't know until it actually happens. And right now, in late August, Jeremy Swayman is among many big name RFAs. Our guy, Seth Jarvis, uh, also uh, among them. Who, who wore a shirt this week with uh, a picture of himself holding a giant money bag. Yeah. Which is, I love the manifestation. Seth Jarvis is the best. He's uh, great. That's That's got to be Jeremy Swayman's next move. Got to wear a shirt with himself carrying a, a suitcase of cash. I don't think that he needs to do any sort of subtle stuff like that because he's not being subtle. No. He went on Mark Lewis, who is a Boston-based uh, content creator, very fun guy, went on his podcast, the Shut Up Mark podcast, and discussed, and I'll remind you, last year the Bruins take, took Jeremy Swam into arbitration. He was very not happy about it. Harbored, I won't say ill will, but kind of... A little bitterness. Remembered that. Yeah. He remembered that. Kept those receipts. He clearly still remembers that. Here is Jeremy Swayman on that podcast discussing the current contract negotiations with the Bruins. You're in a big point in your career with a big contract negotiation going on right now. No one else really knows what this is like. Your first presumably lo- you know, longer contract. What is that like from an athlete's perspective? If you were to ask me that same question a year ago, I would answer it truthfully and I would say it's scary. It's a lot of resentment towards people that want you to succeed. And when you're not getting compensated for your endless efforts and doing what you do best. It's a nerve wracking feeling because it's your family you're fighting for. And the answer I'm going to give you this year is that I've educated myself and that I understand the business side of it all. And it's given me a complete new mindset of understanding the business and how to react to it. I understand the cap is going up and where it will be in years. I understand my comparables and how I can't ruin the goalie market for other guys that are going to be in my shoes down the line. It's nothing I never, I didn't even think of that. I went to the the school of business for the University of Maine. So I love the business side of it all. And I studied it and I love it. I'm doing classes still in Stanford, uh, part of the NHLPA program on business. I know that these experiences I'm doing now are going to help me post-career when I want to be a businessman, when I want to talk about serious stuff you know we'll give you a job at sideline i'm in yeah Yeah, that's special so pat mcafee special whenever you're ready come on down jeremy swayman huge fucking nerd yeah kidding standing on he's standing on business he's literally standing on business yeah that doesn't surprise me at all and he's not a huge fucking nerd but he is nerding out about this because this is his life he feels that they fucked him last year and This happens all the time when teams do bridge contracts. A player can be like, okay, I'll remember that. Yeah, I'll take take this one to my next deal. He didn't, okay, finished third in save percentage, was one of the best goalies in the playoffs last year, Mm -hmm. is 25, turning 26 going into this year. The Bruins were going to trade Linus Olmark pretty much no matter what. They end up moving him. Everyone says he has all the leverage. I kind of think that he does although the one thing we can get to it in a little bit i don't really think there's a threat of an offer sheet because there generally isn't a threat of the offer sheet and with how much money he's looking for yeah I don't, if any team signed him to an offer sheet they would have to give up four first round picks yeah for four first round picks and have to pay a goaltender upwards of 10 million dollars a year uh if you're to believe the asking price which came out this week from rich, rich keith of, of uh, wei said that jeremy swayman was asking for 10 million dollars a year i don't know how much i buy that but it's going to be in the neighborhood like in the general neighborhood, you're going to be paying first round picks plus a lot of money to a goaltender. I think that the the risk and the threat of an impending offer sheet it, it doesn't really exist given what the uh, what the price tag would be for another team. Yeah, let me give you a rundown on the AAV and what it would cost teams if they signed Jeremy Swayman to an offer sheet. If it's between six point eight seven and nine point one six million, 
it's a first, second, and a third. If it's between 9.16 million AAV and 11.45 million, it's two firsts, a second, and a third. If it's between 11.45 million uh, and up, or if it's 11.45 million and up, it's four firsts. And before you say, hey, 9.16 million. Sounds going on outside. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's going on here? Can folks hear this? Can you hear how loud this is? Working. What is that? It, it, are they cleaning the street or something? Uh, it's it's sounds like there's like I think our an building is deflating. Burst. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sinking? Yes. It's like the um. Sean, tell me, me you, business. Remember you remember that commercial? It's Stanley Steamers. Ah, uh, you remember that commercial? Uh, the anti-smoking, anti-weed ad from like the '90s. Where that girl just like deflated Flates. on the couch. Oh yeah, yeah I remember that. That's me. Working. Right now. <laughs> yeah, Stanley Seamers. I don't know what they're doing there. The truck is open on like the side of it, on the other side, facing the street. So I can't see what they're doing. I can just see that they're doing something. Okay. It's well, let me reset steamer. the second half of that, which is if it's between nine point one six million and eleven point four five million, it's two first, second, and a third. And if it's more than eleven point four five million, it's four first round picks. Before you think. Hey, well, a team could sign him to nine and a half million dollars a year, give up two firsts, a second, and a third. That's not so bad. Wrong. Because remember, I always have to remind people of this. The AAV with compensation for RFAs is not the same calculation as it is normally, where it's total money divided by years. With RFA uh, offer sheets, it's calculated by total money divided by years up to five or five. So if a team signs him to even just $10 million for seven years, that AAV, as far as compensation is concerned, $2 million. What's that? Correct. Wouldn't it be $10 million divided by five? It would be $70 million. Oh, okay. AAV. So it's gotcha, total gotcha. money yeah. divided by five, gotcha. which is, I believe, 14. Buddy, that's four first round picks. Yeah. So if you sign him to the contract that seemingly he wants or reportedly he wants, you're giving up four first round picks for him. So I'll at least say don't be scared of an offer sheet because it doesn't seem that's going to happen. Hey, thanks for watching the channel. We appreciate everybody who checks out our stuff, but 80% of our viewers are not actually subscribed to this page. So if you could smash that subscribe button, it would go a very long way for us. The more subscriptions we have, the more visibility we get from YouTube, which allows us to do more. So press that button. Thank you. But here we are, late August, and they're still dicking around with each other. And from that, did it sound like they're close? Do you say that sort of thing when you're at the finish line? Normally you say, I'm sure th something's going to happen. And then like four hours later, the contract signed. Yeah, I, I mean, but they, that, he has had those quotes before. And I think the, the framing of that specific question was like, I, I think it was like, what have you learned from this kind of process? Or like, what has what your feeling been yeah, going you know, through you the said, process? Well, said like, take me into this negotiation. Yeah. What's your mindset? Yeah, so I, I think that he was getting more into like his personal feelings versus like, are you close? Because we've seen both sides to this point say we're going to get a, get something done here so uh, the confidence that both sides seem to have don't indicate that they're that far apart it's just like at some point you gotta rump his time is over get the deal done yeah i i don't know how close or far or apart they are i will note as i've noted before his agent uh, lewis gross also represents tory krug so this this is a pair that has had some not fun times over the years but the $10 million thing has kind of freaked people out because it's been met with, oh, well, that's just uh, a radio guy. What does he know? Somebody who's connected to the Bruins talks to Rich Keefe because he's heard some stuff that's ended up being right. He was right about David Posternock's contract. So I'm not dismissing Rich Keefe. He's also a friend, but I don't think that he's just pulling stuff out of his ass. As he's noted, would he make, why, if he's making stuff up for clout, would he make up? respectfully hockey fans a boston bruins rumor in august i think he'd make up something a little more uh, salacious he, he works in a, in in the boston market right but why wouldn't he say like hey the patriots are starting drake may week one that's gonna get him the clout yeah if he was ma if he was just pure making shit up sure yeah yeah okay so the the 10 million dollar aav ask as i said has freaked some people out crunched some numbers looked at the highest paid goalies in the nhl and based it off percentage of cap sean if you would throw this up uh 
Carey Price obviously has the biggest contract. The uh, percentage of the cap in the year one, 13.21% of the cap was Sergey uh, Carey Price's uh, $10.5 million AAV. If you take that percentage, which again is the highest percentage of a cap in year one yeah, of a goalie throw that, contract. Throw that, uh, graphic up just to see the numbers. So Price, Bobrovsky, Vasilevsky, and Hellebuck. Yeah. Also note that in the cases of Hellebuck, Bobrovsky, and Price, they're 30 years old. Vasilevsky's was signed uh, more closely to Swayman's age. He's currently 25. He's going to be 26 in November. But the percentage of the cap in year one is what's more important when you're looking at these things because it's not just like, oh, should he be making as much as Andre Vasilevsky? Andre Vasilevsky signed his contract a while ago. Mm -hmm. So it's if you want to give him the quote unquote the same contract, you take what the percentage of the cap was in year one and you apply it to this year's cap, which is $88 million. Did crunch those numbers. If we go by Carey Price contract, it would be $11.62 million AAV. If we go by Bobrovsky contract, it would be $10.79 million AAV. There you go. Good work, Sean. If we go by Vasilevsky, $10.26 million AAV. And Hellebuck, which starts this year, is just what it is. So $8.5 million AAV. Which, by the way, that Connor Hellebuck deal, awesome in comparison to the rest of those. Yeah, yes. 30, though, still. But, I mean, the... AAV is just so much lower yeah. that it shows, though, that the goalie market has been going the other way, and Swayman wants it to. Swayman wants to be a big part of fixing it. I love the move of, and again, I, I love Jeremy Swayman. If I ran into him right now on the street, I think that it would be appropriate if we hugged each other. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's that good a guy. I like the move of. I need to do this for my fellow goalies. <laughs> Give me the most money. <laughs> I will be the man that will fix this. It's great. Everybody wins. You get paid. And everyone's like, Jeremy Swayman, thank you. You saved all the future goalies. I like this move. I like it for my guy. I'll tell you what. A lot of Bruins fans don't like the move. See, I saw a lot of Bruins fans cooking Jeremy Swayman. Well, like, then get, get out. this guy out of here. Well, then move Selfish. to Canada. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of Bruins fans being, uh, being dickheads to Jeremy Swayman. I say, always get your money. Yeah. Always get your money. Uh, you are not... I, I love when guys take hometown discounts. Like, Bruins have benefited from that for quite some time at this point. I never expect it. I never expect it, especially when the like the leadership group is transitioning. Like, most of the core from the previous generation uh, for this Bruins core, it's gone. All those guys took discounts for the most part. It doesn't have to stay that way moving this moving into this uh this generation. And Jeremy Swayman clearly wants his money, especially after uh getting getting his feelings hurt last year during arbitration, which by the way, the arbitration whole process is designed to hurt your feelings. Yeah. I see I like That's, the way I don't that hold he, that against the Bruins at all. I like the way that he put it though, like you grow to resent people who want you to succeed. The Bruins yeah. want Jeremy Swayman to be the best player he can be, and then they sit him down. And this isn't specific to the Bruins, but just don't fucking take your players to arbitration. Um, actually, as Don Sweeney will note, he took us to arbitration. How did we possibly get here? <laughs> We're all looking for the guy who did this. Another thing, and this is more aimed towards probably like local talking heads, a big pet peeve of mine is if Swayman remains unsigned as camp begins... He is not holding out. He doesn't have a contract. I hate when people say a player is holding out when they're not there because they don't have a contract. Like he because can't be there. The reason, the, yeah, the, the reason they're not there isn't because they're refusing to show up. They're refusing to sign a deal that they're not comfortable signing, but that's a two-sided thing yeah. because the other team is refusing to give the player the deal that they desire. And based on those numbers and the percentage of the cap, Swayman, who was top five two years ago in save percentage, top three in save percentage last year, is, we agree, probably a top five-ish goalie? Ish, yeah. I, th that's where I put him. Yeah. And maybe he ends up solidifying himself as like an annual Vesna guy. He yeah, needs to play more. The question is, 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 you know, can he do it without a 1B? 
or you know as part of a a tandem that splits a lot of time that's the big question right now and and you know obviously he's been good the past two years it's still relatively early on um goalies can be pretty volatile can be pretty unpredictable so like my question to you would be what is the number that makes you uncomfortable if Jeremy Swayman signs? Yeah, so I, I, well, I was just going to say, like, if you're going to see him as all these things and give him the contract that a top five or three or whatever goalie would get, then you are looking at 10 million plus or 10.79 if you want to replicate the Bobrovsky contract, which Bobrovsky was a UFA, or if you want to just do the Vasilevsky contract, $10.26 million. Going into this summer... I would wrinkle my nose once it starts to get north of nine. I've thought all along, just it's going to be eight times eight and a half. And if Swayman's not comfortable with that, which maybe he's not comfortable with that, then do six times eight and a half. Because the Bruins, I don't think, want to give huge AAV. I always caution, if it's a very good player, against doing the fine. We want a lower AAV, so we'll go shorter years. That's how you end up with like Austin Matthews type contracts, which great for the player, not amazing for the team. I think that at this point, having crunched the numbers, I understand if Swayman wants $10 million a year. And if you want to not give him $10 million a year, then you're just going to have to go shorter and get him to UFA sooner. So that's how I feel. Yep, I think that's, that's fair. We're all sitting like the mayor. 